All right, guys, I know it's been a while since my last video, and there's a reason. I've been working. That's the bad news. The good news is it's given me a little bit of extra money for other projects like this. Let me introduce you to one of the prototypes to a 3D printed intake. Huh? Huh? Voiding Warranties is currently undergoing some minor renovations, so until further notice, please do not use the third bathroom or click the dislike button. Thank you. In fact, I went through several different revisions of this, getting the shape just right, going through the general idea, and making sure it was sturdy enough to actually hold up. And the best part is, I'm not actually using any of these. This is actually closest to the real 3D printed intake I'm gonna make. This is made of, uh, of ABS plastic and it's only the first little bit that connects up to the throttle body. Now I've taken these three ports here and I've already threaded them up so I can put nipples on them. And this is so I can attach hoses for the oil metering valves, as well as the uh, air to the crankcase, and the uh, bypass air that goes to flush fuel out of the intake. Forgot what that's called, but really all it does is it keeps fuel from pooling at the bottom of the intake just by a little jet of air. But I threaded these up uh, in the ABS plastic. They work fine. Over here, I have a non-threaded connection, which I'm gonna actually get the right size on the next version and uh, I'm gonna thread this up and this is gonna hold my intake air temperature sensor. And like I said, this is ABS plastic. Uh, it's pretty common for 3D printers, but the material I'm gonna make the real intake out of, it's, uh, it's a little bit less common. I'm gonna use carbon fiber reinforced nylon. Now, when I first got this, I thought it was gonna be one of those exotic materials that's just a complete pain in the butt to use. But I did a couple small prints with it and it's easier to work with than ABS, at least from what I saw. And that's because there's no curling. You don't have to worry about shrinkage on your parts. The carbon fiber cinches it up, so when it lays it and prints it, that's just what it is. Now, I haven't tried any big pieces. The biggest piece I made was about that big, that big around, just to see if I could, you know, crush it with my hands, basically. But it's pretty stout stuff, and I have no doubt it will print just fine on my printer. Now I've just got to finish, you know, figuring what fits. So this wasn't exactly the right size I was looking for. In fact, I think I'm going to chop it off about here and then just end it. Then I'll just use a silicone elbow to connect to the turbocharger. I'd be working on that today, except, well, things happen. Right now, both the Blue Beast and the White Stallion are down. The Blue Beast. I'm pretty sure that's my fault because, you know, I kind of let it rain on the brain unit. That wasn't the brightest idea. And the white stallion's down because I'm not honestly sure. Um, I cleaned the MAF sensor, I cleaned the air filter. At this point, I'm starting to think that it's an ignition problem. I should just replace all three coils, spark plugs and wires and be done with it. And that's what I'm going to be doing this afternoon. Now, if you want to see how this becomes an actual 3D printed intake, well, why don't you subscribe? Because as soon as I get it printed, I'll be posting it here, and you guys will get to see it firsthand. If you like this video, click like. If you want to see more like it, click subscribe. And remember, keep on voiding warranties.